Hi guys, I recently saw a patient with acute chest pain with a blood pressure of 240 by 130 millimeters mercury. Now how to manage this kind of hypertension in acute setting? And this is what this video is about, hypertensive crisis. I'll be talking about how the patient can present, investigation to be seen and the management options, the drugs to be given. And please watch this video till the end so that you do not make those mistakes in your clinical practice. So let's get started. Now hypertensive crisis can be of two types. One is hypertensive emergency. The other one is hypertensive urgency. Now the common thing between these two is blood pressure on a higher side that is more than equal to 180 by 120 millimeters mercury. Now as emergency has E in it, so with a high blood pressure, you have end organ damage, whereas urgency doesn't have E. So remember, it's just the high blood pressure that is more than equal to 180 by 120. That's it. Over here, high blood pressure with end organ damage. Now, what do you mean by that end organ damage? Start. Let's start from above. In brain, patient can have encephalopathy, can present with headache, confusion, dizziness, seizures. So that is encephalopathy. Second, patient can present with intracerebral hemorrhage. Third, patient can present with ischemic stroke. So remember, patient can have all these variations, all these neurological manifestations with a high BP. Yes, it is under hypertensive emergency. I'll be talking about the management option also. Second, now come down and patient in, in, in the eyes, patient can present with retinal hemorrhages or papilledema. And how does a patient present? Blurring of vision. This is how they can see. So blurring of vision with a high BP, think about again hypertensive emergency. Third, coming down to the heart, patient can present with acute chest pain, as I just mentioned. And also patient can have acute coronary syndrome. So same situation. Now, from the heart, we have uh, the aorta which is coming out. So remember aortic dissection. So patient presenting with acute chest pain and that were tearing like a chest pain, tearing type of pain, which radiates through the back. Also, these patients can have unequal blood pressure measurement. So this is how you need to evaluate. This is the presentation with high BP, again, hypertensive emergency. Now, for the fifth, if we go further down, we have the kidneys. So patient presenting with oliguria or n-urea. So decrease urine output. This is how they present. And obviously, if you see the renal parameters, the urea, the creatinine especially, it just keeps jumping. 1.5 times the baseline or 2 times the baseline. So that is how we check. And others, but keep we keep in the others, others are preeclampsia or eclampsia in a case of definitely a pregnant lady. So a patient, a pregnant lady presenting with seizures with a blood pressure more than 180 by 120, again, we keep it under hypertensive emergency. So these are emergency scenarios. Whereas I, I mentioned earlier, under urgency, nothing. It is just high blood pressure. Now, how do we evaluate these patients? The investigations, very important. Again, we'll start from head. If there are neurological manifestations, you have to go for CT MRI. Then if there are eye changes, vision problems, th this is how patient presented, you have to go with fundoscopy. If they are the chest findings or patient presenting with a chest pain, definitely you have to go with ECG, echocardiography and troponin or you can say cardiac biomarkers apart from the general basic investigations. Aortic dissection, very, very, very important. This aortic dissection is just like a time bomb, right? Time bomb in your hospital patient can die any time. So you have to, you have to be on toes. You have to alarm everything, everyone. Now, aortic dissection, obviously, you have to go with chest x-ray, checking and seeing that widening of the mediastinum or, to be very precise, CT angio. This is what you can go for. Then, fifth, if you have the real parameters uh, problem, then obviously, you have to check the electrolytes and the renal function test, right? Especially the creatinine. And in pregnancy, obviously, you have to have that history, right? And you need to be very, very fast in managing all these situations. Now, coming on to the major uh, important part of this video is how do we manage it? 
So they are special. So we have to, in a case of emergency, we need to be very fast. The first thing to be done is always ABC because it's an emergency. So you check for airway, breathing, circulation, secure to IV line. And then comes the special special situations, right? Where you, you, you just uh, select the antihypertensive to be given to the patient. Otherwise, mainly you have to reduce. Just remember a goal that in a case of emergency also, try not to decrease blood pressure very, very rapid. Yes, you should be fast, but not very rapid. Now, how do we say very rapid? Is it should be less than 25%, less than 25% in the first hour. And by the second or maybe till sixth hour, the blood pressure target should be decreasing the systolic to around 160 millimeters mercury. If, uh, if not uh, any other condition, just like I'll be talking about as in the case of aortic dissection, you have to reduce it, right? You have to reduce it in, in a case of um, intracerebral hemorrhage. So I'll be talking about those special circumstances. So remember, for the management in an emergency condition, you have to first of all decrease it and that too with your IV drugs. You cannot think about your oral drugs. So IV drugs is the one. Second, it should not be very rapid it should be very controlled and that controlled is decreasing the blood pressure but not more than 25 percent in the first hour and by the second hour remember have a target of decreasing till 160 millimeters of mercury that is a safe range whereas if i talk on the other side urgency you have to have a gradual reduction gradual reduction of the blood pressure in 24 to 48 hours this is what to be done in urgency if there is no end organ damage. There is no point giving and running behind and decreasing the blood pressure, not at all. Now, I'll talk about the special circumstances and obviously the drugs to be used along with their dosages. Now, for the management option, according to the special circumstances, let's start with acute ischemic stroke. You can use and very commonly we use as Lebetalol 10 to 20 milligram IV bolus. And you can repeat 10 to 20 milligram every 10 minutes up to 300 milligram. And the other alternative can be nicardipine or clavidipine. Now, if there is no thrombolysis planned in a case of ischemic stroke, uh, treat only if the systolic is more than 220 or diastolic more than 120. Otherwise, you do not, you do not need to treat the blood pressure, right? But if thrombolysis is planned, that means patient presented inside that window period now reduce the blood pressure the systolic blood pressure to 185 less than that or the diastolic less than 110 before the thrombolytic agent right so this is about acute ischemic stroke second if you have a scenario of intracerebral hemorrhage or subarachnoid hemorrhage the preferred agents in these again can be nicardipine clavidipine or lebetalol Remember, in these conditions, in neurological manifestation or neurological conditions, especially the bleeds, we always, always try to avoid sodium nitroprusside. That is very important, right? So always never, ever give sodium nitroprusside because it's a cerebral vasodilator and the bleeding can worsen. The scenario, the ICP, the pressure inside the brain can increase. So please do not use sodium nitroprusside in neuro conditions. If we come in down, then yes, we have the heart. Patient presenting with acute uh, coronary syndrome with a high, severe hypertension. Obviously, the best one is you start with nitroglycerin over here, which is very, very important, which just decreases the pain and obviously the blood pressure as well. So the infusion of nitroglycerin can be from 5 to 200 micrograms per minute. It depends. You have to titrate according to the BP and the pain. And you can add a beta blocker if not contraindicated. And in, a, in these cases also, always try to avoid large rapid BP drops or you cannot just have the crashing of the blood pressure, right? So uh, otherwise it just reduce the coronary perfusion pressure and scenario can worsen. So just remember that you do not have to just decrease very fast. Now talking about aortic dissection, the first line drug, whether it is stand for type A or type B, is Lebetalol. You give 20 mg IV and then 20 to 80 mg every 10 minutes as needed. Or you can start an infusion as well. The other alternative drug could be Esmolol or you can start Nicardipine, Clevidipine. 
and remember to avoid hydralazine and any pure vasodilator before beta blockade. Coming to the renal thing, patient presenting with uh, acute kidney injury, preferred again can be nicardipine or clavidipine or you can consider phenoldopam. Right, so th th these are the drugs again to be used over here. Now, the last I would say very important is pregnancy and patient presenting with eclampsia. So high BP with a schizer. So always you go ahead with schizer control and prophylaxis, which is which we very commonly use as magnesium sulfate. Four grams IV loading dose over 10 to 15 minutes. And then you can go ahead with one to two gram per hour infusion. For the BP measurement or the BP control, it is always better in a pregnancy to go ahead with Libetalol or Hydrolazine. The dose of Libetalol is the same, 20 mg IV, then you can go ahead with 20 to 80 mg every 10 minutes and maximum of 300 mg, which we have already discussed. Hydrolazine, you can go ahead with 5 to 10 mg IV. And, and the other alternative can be Nifidipine also. So remember, you have to, in, in the preeclampsia or eclampsia, in a case of pregnancy, always aim to have a systolic under 160 and diastolic under 105 and in these conditions always try to avoid ACE inhibitors in a pregnancy obviously ACE inhibitors and nitroprusside as well. So this is about the whole hypertensive crisis and I would say the main which is important for us are the hypertensive emergencies. How to look for the investigations and the management plans all these drugs also and I have given that in the chart section also so you can just remember that and and please 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 manage that effectively do not have a tendency to just decrease the blood pressure from 240 to 100 which i saw happen right so always try to decrease it in a controlled manner so that's it about this whole video i hope you liked it you loved it and there was some learning point so if at all it was just share with your colleagues right and hit the like button okay see you bye bye